Welcome to In the Den with Dr. Jen, an open-minded and fun place for women to explore sexuality in a comprehensive manner and start thinking about female sexuality outside the box. We have a wealth of knowledge to offer from the den today with our guest, Buffy Owens. Buffy's passion for the mind-body-spirit connection and the power of the feminine has been a thriving force in her life for over a decade. Her passion has woven a path from massage to academics and on into various forms of movement, yoga, prenatal yoga, breath work, personal training, and Feldenkrais. Buffy's passion for the mind has brought her through the academic realm of studying psychology and into the presence of becoming a conscious life coach. Her passion for the spirit has guided her life for many years and continues to thrive in her daily practice. Today, Buffy merges life coaching with breath work, conscious movements, yoga, and ebb and flow of feminine cycles to ignite personal transformation inside and out. Buffy is currently studying Feldenkrais and has volunteered as a doula at UCSD. Hello, Buffy. Hello, Jen. <laughs> you clearly have so much amazing knowledge to share with women from so many perspectives, so I'm going to start at that question, can you give us an overview of the modalities that you've been involved with and how they connect to female sexuality? Hmm, well, I think you covered most of them in the introduction. <laughs> um, I would say every modality, being a woman, has connected to female sexuality. So in my personal life, I have studied uh, natural family planning and fertility awareness, as well as various forms of cultivating female sexual energy, which is fun. And enticing. Um, <laughs> I've also studied yoga for quite a while and I love the the cycles of yoga following the moon which women's cycles also follow the moon mm -hmm. and this sort of idea of contracting and expanding which is very much in line with our cycles as well um, and on into movement with personal training when I was in college I learned that the dominant time of injuries for women was actually during ovulation, oh. which I was absolutely fascinated by. Very interesting. Yeah. Very surprising. Huh. Well, there's a release of estrogen, which, um, as many of us know, leaves us feeling very energetic. Mm -hmm. So right around that time of ovulation, mm -hmm. there's energy spikes. Okay. But then there's also a subtle release of relaxin, which is often released when a woman is pregnant to allow things to expand. So the connective tissue is a little bit softer. Oh, so, fascinating. Yeah. Now, I mentioned uh, Feldenkrais in the introduction. I, that's probably new to a lot of people. Could you give a little background on what Feldenkrais is? I can. Feldenkrais, well, it's amazing. <laughs> um, there are two components. There's something called awareness through movement, which in and of itself is absolutely incredible. And it is basically and roughly um, learning to move with the nervous system. So the movements are very subtle and done with complete awareness. And this awareness begins to shift the mind and the body. And I believe that doing this type of work allows us to create more options for our body and thus more options for our mind and ultimately more options for our life. So it's incredible and amazing work. Well, and I know the one time, because um, you guided me and a group of women <clears throat> through a little session of it, and it was the most subtle movements to the point in the beginning that I was like, okay, we're not doing anything, this is boring. And then once I just started paying attention to my mind chatter and then paying attention to my body, it was, the subtle shifts were phenomenal to the point that I drove home and then I was like, well, where do I hold my head and my neck and what's appropriate? And so that awareness that we don't have about our body, um, and even just a little taste of that was, was really opened my mind, so. Very cool. So what, with all these different modalities, what do you think is the value in merging them for helping women around their sexuality? Well, first we always have our bodies, right? Our bodies <laughs> are with us wherever we go. So in that, it's, it's a great tool for grounding and coming back to the moment. And just like you just said, that sort of, you know, the mind gets going and then you bring yourself back to being aware. I can't think of anything more powerful. I mean, to progress us in life, but also 
even in those intimate times of having sex. If our mind is busy chattering, mm -hmm. there's a lot less awareness that's happening with the sensations of the body. So freeing that up can definitely enhance um, pleasure. And pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Enjoyment. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. Um, and I know this is going to be hard for you to boil down, but if there were three things that you wish women knew about their sexuality, about their sexual health, what would they be? Well, I think the first thing would be something that definitely affected, I was very profound discovery for myself, was that our cycles are actually a blessing. You know, that this, like, PMS has such a negative connotation, yeah. but I think really PMS just allows us to tap into whatever is going on either in our mind or in our body, and it really brings it to the forefront. And so that's a gift, right, to have that tool where every month we are allowed to really witness in a very loud way what's happening. <laughs> very loud sometimes. <laughs> very loud. So, and, I mean, men don't really have that option. Absolutely. So I would say that is definitely the first thing I would want women to know. The second thing is just staying in tune with those cycles. Um, it allows us to know what, going on, what is going on, what speaks most loudly in, our, loudly in our life, but also beginning to understand and relate to our cycles can actually empower us to do what our body is calling for in the moment, whether it's a specific type of movement. Maybe at some time during your cycle you're more called to stretch, whereas others you might want to go for a vigorous hike or a run. You know, there are also times where different areas of the brain are working. So there are times when we are more sort of out in the world and vocal, and other mm -hmm. times where we want to retreat and be more creative. And so just allowing ourselves to, to work with our cycles, I think, is very empowering. So very much interconnection. Very mind much paying interconnection. attention to here and here's paying attention to the mind type of thing. Okay. Definitely. And a third thing? The third thing, I think... I think I'm going to combine two here. Okay. One is, um, or A, we'll say, three A, <laughs> is that in order to really fully experience what's going on down here, we also need to quiet what's going on up here. Mm -hmm. So that interconnectedness is so connected, so much so that um, if you've ever been at a, a birth with a midwife, you can tell when a woman starts to constrict her throat, it will actually start to almost impair the birth. Right, the vagina actually starts to constrict as well. Oh, wow. So calming the mind and relaxing the throat and speaking for what we need actually allows for a greater flow to happen oh, down below in our vagina. So it's, it's, that is a great realization, I think, especially for women, to realize that so much goes on in relationship to the right. throat and our sex. And the second thing would be that we have multiple types of orgasms. I think a lot of the population gets sort of caught up in the clitoral or the more regional orgasm right. down here. But allowing yourself to expand that to the body, allowing the throat to be calm, the mind to be calm, and holding that awareness of the entire body can actually allow for a whole body orgasm. Mm. Which, who doesn't want that? Yeehaw! <laughs> awesome. Okay, and our final question is the randomly generated Gorilla Soapbox question. Uh, let's see what comes up. Oh! When did you get your first period, and how was the experience for you? Well, <laughs> I got my first period when I was 11, mm -hmm. uh, about three months before I turned 12, actually. And it was awful. Yeah. I was raised by my father at that point in time, and um, I actually thought I shot myself. I oh. thought I had gas and diarrhea, and I got up in the middle of the night and changed oh. my sheets. Oh came back and I was like, there is no way that I did that twice. And then realized that I had started my period. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I was just really angry. I was pissed. I calculated how many days for the rest of my life I would be menstruating <laughs> and what percentage of my life I was going to spend <laughs> having that sensation and presented it to my father. And I was really um, angry that I was a woman. My father, on the other hand, he actually took me out for dinner. Aww. Sort of welcome to womanhood dinner. Aww. So we went out for Chinese food, which was my favorite. He had a little cake. Kind of welcome to womanhood. That, that's impressive. That's really impressive yeah. for your dad. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That was a great story. And if you'd like to learn more about Buffy and what she does, you can check out her website here. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. <laughs>